Well, good afternoon, Mike. It's a pleasure to be with you here on your show today and to share with some of your visitors the plants in the Arboretum. I want to spend the first part of the time talking about probably one of my favorite plants and the symbol of the North Carolina State University Arboretum is the Japanese maple. The tree I'm standing with here is probably the finest single plant we have in our collection, some 5,000 different plants out here. And it was donated to us by an individual here in Raleigh growing on an estate there where it had been for some 65 years. This particular form is a cut leaf Japanese maple, probably the most elegant and beautiful of all of our trees. And although the tree may not look too large, some 12 to 14 feet high, this tree is 65 years old and because of its great age has great value. This tree would be worth some $15,000 but that's an extreme, probably the largest one in the state of North Carolina. Now, it's a very popular plant in North Carolina and homeowners can get all different kinds that they might use in their gardens. The different varieties will have different shapes, different forms, different colors of leaves, different leaf size, different fall color. So it's a group of plants, even though it's only one species, that has a lot of variety and you can tailor to whatever your needs are in the garden. Now, most of the Japanese maples sold are seedlings, and so you're not always sure of the characteristics, although they all make fine and beautiful plants that you could use in your home garden. But if you want specific characteristics, like very good red color or a very dwarf growth habit, something like this, it's like apples or peaches or something like that, or roses. You have to go to name varieties in those cases to get the ones that you really want that specific characteristic but there's no such thing as a bad Japanese maple. And they're fairly reasonable in price. You can buy small plants for anywhere from five to $10. And depending on the rarity and size, you can go on all the way up into the hundreds of dollars. But it's a good plant to invest in for the future because they can essentially live forever. It'll still be a fine tree 50, 100 years from now and a beautiful asset into the garden, getting more valuable every year. Now, one of the main things I would emphasize to your viewers, there's a lot of problems that occur in the nursery business with buying red leafed varieties because they like this bright color that you see here in the early spring that don't necessarily stay red all year. As you go into the summer months, the leaves may begin to fade and turn back to a green color. And that's disappointing to someone that has bought a variety that they hope is red. Well, the main thing to do in that case, there's two things you must do, is one is to, in that case, possibly stay away from seedlings because they're quite variable. They might start out red in the spring and then slowly fade to green. If you're going to buy a seedling, there are some red seedlings that will stay red all summer. And the best thing to do is to go to your nursery at the peak of the midsummer heat. Go there in July or August. And any maple that is still bright red at that time will always be good and red for you in the garden. The other thing is to buy a named variety. And you'll see here, it's uh, another plant we're taking a look at. This is one called Bloodgood, and it has a dark red color all summer, very dependable. And so if you go with that named variety, and you have to pay a little bit more for that because it's more difficult to propagate and grow. The other thing on color, in terms of people who want the red ones, is make sure that you plant them out in good sun. People often feel that because it's hot and they fade, if they put them in the shade, they won't fade quite as bad. But the color is dependent on the amount of food that the tree makes and saves, and that's mainly a night temperature thing. So they put it in the sun, it can make more sugars, more food, and it will stay a brighter red. If you put a red leaf maple in a dark shade, it will turn green. I do want to show just a couple of varieties. Uh, there are literally hundreds of named varieties in the trade that one can find. Although they're not common in North Carolina as name varieties, and you'll have to hunt, but you can find them if you look long enough. If you have a small property that you don't want overwhelmed by a large tree, this is one of the Japanese dwarf varieties that we're taking a look at here called Kamagata. It's named after a man in Oregon who studied and published a book on Japanese maples, uh, Mr. J.T. Vertrees. His book, Japanese Maple, is the reference if anyone wants to look that up and get all about the varieties. But this tree is a very nice, delicate texture. It stays a small plant and probably in 20 years' time would not grow over seven or eight feet in height. So you can have a small property or an apartment or townhouse and still enjoy a Japanese maple in that area. Now, the large tree that I showed you at the beginning uh, is a cut leaf form. Typically, those cut leaves, although they're the most beautiful leaf type of Japanese maple 
are weeping or pennulous, and they don't get tall like the one that we saw except with very large age. Now, there, are, there is one variety of cut leaf that will grow upright and be normal tree shape, and you see it here as we take a look through the garden. This is Sariyu, S-E-R-I-Y-U, and it is a beautiful cut leaf, grows very fast, and it grows upright. So if you want a cut leaf that goes up, you have to look for that one specific variety as you'd go through. And then one last variety that is distinctively different that uh, is well worth the uh, homeowner trying to find because it gives you such longer season of use for Japanese maple is one called Sango Kaku. That's S-A-N-G-O-K-A-K-U, or it's often called the coral bark maple. Now as you see it here, it looks like any other Japanese maple. Now our plant's still fairly small, but the leaves and so forth look like normal Japanese maples. The real glory of this maple, though, comes when winter comes, and the leaves fall, and the limbs turn a bright coral pink red color. It's a stunning winter color accent in the garden, so you get not only the nice summer feature of the plant, but good winter features as well. But as a plant, the Japanese maple will grow throughout North Carolina, from the mountains to the seacoast. It's adaptable to all landscapes, and very, very easy to grow. Very few pest problems once they're installed in the landscape. And that's primarily why we chose it originally as the symbol of the arboretum, because it is such a good plant for this state.